If it comes off demonic, that's what we are. One thing is for sure, Satan sells. No matter how you slice it, it's not the heavy metal bands like Black Sabbath and Kiss that are losing money in the current record industry depression. In fact, some new groups seem to be picking up that satanic smell of success and following along in its path. The Lords of the New Church uh, is, uh, can be taken obviously a variety of ways in terms of the title and what it might imply and what their name is. I, I, first of all, I question how many of these bands, how many of these bands truly have a, a satanic motive, you know, and I think that what's, what, what goes on with anything uh, is that once the issue is brought up, people tend to try to look for those things and they'll try to place it and they'll say, aha, I see that that's implying some sort of a uh, religious or satanic uh, overtone. I think that within the rock music field, you've got people who really are into the occult and into Satan. Uh, and then you've got some who probably are playing games, but no matter how you cut it, they're propagating Satan. They're propagating the demonic line, the occultic world, and I think it's a devastating thing on our culture. I don't think there's anything too evil about it. I don't want to, you know, grow up and, and be some devil worshiper because I've only believed in music all of my life. As far as any, any message from uh, Satan or uh, the forces of evil are concerned, uh, that, uh, I, it's funny. I really think, I, think I find it very amusing. Is this a ridiculous notion or is Satan rampant in rock? To some, the answer is obvious. Skull-headed monsters and demon-like figures are probably the most blatant. Then there is the upside-down cross, depicting a mockery of Jesus Christ. There is, of course, the sign of Satan. And there is the number 666, also known as the mark of the beast, the symbol belonging to the Antichrist, who, the Bible tells us, is Satan. It's almost cute. It's almost in to be satanic, and I think that speaks of, of the culture abandoning its Christian roots. But in May of 1982, teenagers of a congregation in Topeka, Kansas, destroyed thousands of dollars worth of records and tapes, which they felt contained the message of Satan. The Christian concern sheds light on a more secular aspect of music listening. It's what you don't hear. Government investigation has found subliminal messages on certain albums when played in reverse. A bill now before Congress would require warning labels on those records containing backward masking. And that way, uh, uh, young people that don't want this kind of material, whether it's political messages that Reagan is a great guy or whether it has anything to do with, with Satan or Charlie Chan, uh, they're not going to have to uh, listen to it. Parents who go out to buy their kids, uh, the teeny boppers, uh, record albums during the Christmas period, uh, they will see uh, the warning label. What I've done here is queued up this song. It's called um, Fire on High from the ELO Face the Music album. Yeah. And I wouldn't have known about it. I mean, I, I've played this record a million times, and I've heard that you know what tape sounds like when it's running backwards. I've heard that there's something in here backwards, but I've never felt moved to put it on tape and run it backwards and see what it says. Well, it's real easy, this particular record, to just take your hand and, and go like this, and we'll hear what it says. The music is reversible, but time... Turn back. Turn back. The music is reversible, but time... Turn, turn back, back. Turn, turn back. What does that mean? I think it's a gimmick. I mean, it's, it's not... Uh, it doesn't seem too diabolical to me. I think it's just a gimmick. Gimmick? Maybe. Let's take a closer look at what some bands are really doing. You're listening to the number one requested song of the last 10 years, a familiar song. Some believe it deserves a warning label. Why? Listen to the song backwards. It's called Stairway to Heaven. I think just the very fact that this has gotten some attention may cause record groups to say, hey, uh, rather than get hassled by the feds, 
uh, let's do all this rotten satanic stuff forward. People say it's, it's, it's uh, Satanism. You can say we're a religion because when you have 5,000 kids all believing in this band, that is a religion. It is Satan carrying us further and further and further all the time. It's, you know, it's, it's selling your soul. Nobody's gonna stop us. We're going straight to the top, we're red hot. a new way to test if record will be hit or miss. I play record for typical American parent. If they like it, it's a miss. If they hate it, it's a hit. Now I play new electro record. Shout at the Devil by Motley Crue. Looks like we've got big hit on our hands. Get Shout at the Devil by Motley Crue. We know it's a hit. We've got technology on our side. Hey, all you party animals, this is <laughs> Mick Mars. Big <laughs> six. Vince Neil and Tommy Lee of Motley Crue. Welcome, Welcome to, to Good Rockin' Tonight. You guys play rock and roll. Oh, that's, yeah. what, that's what it's all about. This that's, is, that's, that's the icing. That's secondary, yeah. really. But this is cute. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's cute. That's I've never, the icing I've never on heard the Motley Crue called cute before. But oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you started uh, in, a, in a circuit. Did you play like a, a tough club circuit in Los Angeles? Yeah. yeah. We, came, we came up through, through the clubs. We, you know, we actually, our, one of our second shows, we played a sandwich shop. In a sandwich and made 12 bucks, 12 bucks and split yeah. it four we ways. We had to go back and play the gig again because our beer tab was so large. We had to... <laughs> you owed them. Yeah, yeah, we did. Do you remember those days? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That, that's important. Because mm -hmm. uh, one would assume that you were going to get bigger and bigger and well, bigger. We definitely don't want to be there again. No. <laughs> no. But that's what it was all about. It's what it's still all about is, you know, rock and roll in the street. And we don't want to lose touch with our fans. How many of those songs are still part of the set today? Any of them survive? Uh, well, in this show, three of them are. Yeah. Looks mm -hmm. like Kiwis that yeah. we played years ago. Yeah. It, was, it was around during Too Fast for Love, but we just never recorded mm -hmm. it. And then we'd finally end up... Actually, songs that were written before Too Fast for Love are going to end up on the third album. That's funny. Is this true? Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. All right, when, when, did you, when did you actually put it together? Three years ago. Three years ago. What was happening in Los Angeles at the time? What, what, New Wave. New, New Wave. The Knack so syndrome. The Knack was skinny you know, ties. The so they thought you guys were from Planet. We were going against the grain. You know, yeah. there, was no, there was no one like us at all in Hollywood. The, the heavy metal wasn't being played. You couldn't even play in a club if you're a heavy metal band. It was all like pop music uh, and New Wave we, stuff. We, we got a really lucky break, a band yeah. called Y&T. I'm sure you've heard yeah. of um, came down from San Francisco to play a club called the Starwood and it was a two-night event, four shows and, and, and our very first show we got to play in front of all those kids and they went, wow. So then right after that we started playing the clubs but by ourselves, you know, because we got, got a following and it, it slowly built that way. We, we almost headlined all the way to where we're at now. You guys worked hard? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Is it going to pay off? Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> what, what are, like, what are audiences? Uh, what are Aussies' audiences doing for? I mean, the, uh, it's the same audience. Yeah, yeah. That's what's really great. I mean, it's not yeah. like they're they're being bored with Motley Crue while they're waiting for Ozzy Osbourne. His well, fans are our fans. Exactly. You know, it's yeah, a rock and roll event. This it's tour. a great package. Two good good shows. It's, it's I know. From the beginning of our show to the end of his show, it's exciting, and that's uh, you know, it's, it's a good show. Heavy metal band out there. Who does it better than anybody? I, I think that's, that's I tough. think a lot of the older bands, Scorps, 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 Scorps yeah. Aerosmith, you know, in their prime, couldn't touch them. You know, they were great. The Stones, were. Stones, Stones. I think Zeppelin. Did you ever see Zeppelin? Uh, I saw them one time when I was uh, doing their physical graffiti tour. I think I was too young. <laughs> Anybody else? No, I never seen Bad that. Company. I think the older band. I think the Sweet. newer, the, the newer Sweet. bands are. A lot of them are just. They don't have the, the songs. Some of them do. I'm not, I'm not saying that in general, but a lot of them, especially what you call heavy metal bands, don't have as good songs like Def Leppard, Ourselves, and even Quiet Riot. I think there's songs there, and that's what, that's what makes bands last. As a rock and roll band, none of the, all of this aside, as a rock and roll band, how are you doing? You getting better? Oh, I mean, every time out? Oh, yeah. When you play every day and that's have it. like 13,000 kids, I mean, you can't get bad. Kind of second <laughs> nature, you know, you don't think about it. A lot of, you know, when, when you first, when you don't play a lot, you have to think about what you're doing. It just happens. It just comes out. Feels good right now? Oh, oh yeah. Wow. Man, I love it. Where's it going to go? To the top. You guys going to own it, huh? Yeah. World domination. <laughs> Keep getting it. better songs and that's bigger it. shows. But and that means you've got more power. 
more power, power, you'll get we wilder. We just want the girls. Yeah. <laughs> you can have the power. The money. The money. Okay. Uh, uh, you will not play, change the political... You don't have any political views, do you? No, no. I don't. Okay. Die young. You care about... Uh, <laughs> let's, let's, let's talk about the things you care about. Food. Food. Yeah. Food's important. Sometimes. It depends. Sometimes. Liquid. Yeah. Liquid. Booze. Yeah, yeah. Groceries. Yeah. Money. Money. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Girls. 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 Girls up there towards the front. Rock and roll is important. That's number As a matter of fact, the rock and roll came before the image, didn't it? Always. Yeah. That's just the icing on the cake. Is, See, the, is the the visual part of our of our show? And it's the music first, and then it's the it's the uh, the look. Our look wasn't isn't contrived. We didn't sit down and say, "You have blonde hair, and we're gonna have black hair, and we'll dress this way." I mean, we all we look the way we look right this second when the band was formed, and then that the, the costuming and all was just added to make it you know more entertainment. Because that's what it is. It's entertainment. Then it's the whole concept of shot at the devil. And our concept behind that is that the devil may not, well, isn't to us. I mean, we're not religious in the sense of uh, devil worshipers or Christians or Catholics or anything like that. I mean, we're just a rock and roll band, right? Um, devil could be to a 16-year-old girl, uh, her, her mother, or to a 21-year-old guy could be his boss. We're saying shout at whatever is holding you back from what you want to do. And the American dream for us, we were street kids, and, and the dream for us was to, to be in a rock and roll band and be successful. We've achieved it, and we're saying, go for it. Find this. And the reason why well, we put it right out here, and we said, look at this. There's yeah, a pentagram. But why don't you, why don't you read? When we're telling these, these um, you know, religious fanatics, read this. Shout at the devil. It doesn't say shout with the devil. Yeah. at the devil and that's why we put the pentagram right on the front and a lot of things if you stand in the middle of it the, e the evil can't get into you right. so it's actually a good scene like, uh, everybody's dream you know, it was fantasy it was fantasy exactly it's so funny it's like we always kid around we go, it's our reality it, I mean, it's just fantasy what a way to make a living Someone's got to do it. <laughs> hey, man, somebody's got to snort it, somebody's got to drink it, somebody's got to go to bed with all these girls. It's a hard life. But, you know, as long as I get paid for it, I'll do it. I mean, yeah. come on. Music News. Motley Crue has just finished work on a brand new Motley video. We were there and spoke to the band about it. Looks that kill. Motley Crue's new video is staged in a futuristic heavy metal city, and MTV was there for the making of the clip. Group members Nikki Six and Vince Neal explain the concept. It could be a city of the past, a city of the future. Um, and what it is is we are like the survivors of it, maybe a Holocaust, nuclear war, whatever. And uh, there are these women who are running wild, and we're like the warriors here. And what happens is there is one woman who is like the goddess, the equivalent of us. And together, we all have the looks to kill. Six elaborated on the message the group is trying to make through their music. Everybody, us our, and our audience, who we feel is the same, we have so much aggression in us. We're so young and we have so much, you know, power, energy in us. And instead of us going out and robbing liquor stores and beating up old ladies, we play rock and roll. And that's why we want the kids to come see us because we're positive. For music television, this is John Paoli in Los Angeles. See, for me, instead of going out and robbing liquor stores or beating up old ladies, I work here at MTV, but I guess that's a motley crew. That's a pretty wild statement, don't you think, to say it? Well, anyhow, the ph anyhow, the philosophy behind Motley Crew right there explained to you by the band themselves. Their albums for Electra Asylum sell millions, and they're one of the top ten grossing concert bands this year. Their albums include songs like Bastard, quote, Out goes the light, in goes my knife. Pull out his life, consider that bastard dead. Live wire, quote, I'll either break her face or take down her legs. Get my ways at will. Go for the throat, never let loose. Going in for the kill. And too young to fall in love. Not a woman, but a whore. I can taste the hate. Well, now I'm killing you. Watch your face turning blue. Before we get any further, I should show the album new one. Real nice looking album cover. Shout at the devil. Title track being here. This is it's like um. I got it to work before it like sparkles on there. <laughs> <laughs> the Motley Crue thing. Boy, I tell you, as a Beatle fan, I was very interested to see that you did Help Us Help Us What inspired that? Well, we used to always do it as an encore in Los Angeles. We used to play uh, club band, you know, in clubs and stuff out mm -hmm. there. 
so. So we just recorded it and it came out so well and put it on the album. I really like it too. It's amazing, isn't it, that you can update a song like that? I mean, yeah. that was from, what album was that? The White Album. The White Album, back in 1969, so, yeah. and now it's updated. Yeah, well, also Pat Benatar did it, I think. Yes, she did. Also, looking on the album, the, the comparisons with Motley Crue and Kiss are um, often made. And I found it interesting that you thanked, on your credits, the Kiss organization. Mm -hmm. Why we was we that? had toured with Kiss on, a, on the 1982 tour for a little while on the West Coast, and they were really good to us. They're really good people. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're nice guys. What do you think of them taking off the makeup? Well, they look different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I like it. I think it was a good move. Yeah. They need. They needed to do something to be different. It, you know, there's a whole new generation of kids, and and I think it's a good move. And I've seen some of their new their newer videos, and I really like them. Mm-hmm. They are nice looking, yeah. as are as are yours as well that we have here. We had you in the news a couple of weeks ago. I heard Vince. about it about you being arrested in a bar for punching out a woman. Now, give me the story. Did you haul off and smack a woman? No, but you know, everyone in Hollywood looks like a woman. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it was, that's wrong. I did get arrested that night and I went to jail, but that was not the story. So you want to set the record straight? Yeah, I didn't do it. <laughs> what? You must have I did. I, no, I hit arrested. somebody, but it wasn't a girl. Oh, so you just, you can't get arrested for really just punching somebody. Oh, well, I was, when I was in a brawl, you know, and then I beat up our drummer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just woke up in jail and I go, oh, man. So, but no, that, that wasn't the story at all. It got blown out of proportion. Yeah. It wasn't a little old woman, in other words. No, it wasn't a little old woman. Would you guys really rob liquor stores or beat up old women? No, I got I to gotta, I gotta <laughs> set that straight. Because I heard you saying that one time. What we meant was that if kids, you know, didn't have something as a release like Motley Crue or bands like Kiss and, and a lot of hard rock bands, Iron Maiden and Aerosmith, to go to um, to get their energies out, they, they would be out maybe robbing liquor stores or getting in fights or doing drugs. And that's what we're saying that we're about. Is it's positive. Come see us instead of beating up old ladies. We don't go beat up old ladies. They beat us up. <laughs> <laughs> My kids went and saw you guys do yeah. <laughs> Purse is full of makeup. <laughs> Boom. All Somebody's right. bag lady. Meaner around here. If you can stick around for just a few more minutes, we have some more videos. Think you can you stay for a little bit? Yeah, I hope. Yeah, I hope. Okay, well, yeah. Well, Vince, why don't you say what? Uh, since Nikki got the spotlight before, why don't you say what video that we have? Okay, we're gonna watch Joe Boxer's "Just Got Lucky." <laughs> and Nikki Six. Of Motley. <laughs> <too>. <laughs> The item that's driving the bus driver insane. And you too. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> I've never made nuts. Yeah, one of our many tour toys we have. Mm -hmm. Lots of toys. You do have, I do really go wild when you're on a bus. Yeah, we like to have a good time. You really you're so confined, time. you know, in it, so you have to do something. So we, have, we even have cars that race up and down the hallways. You know. Of a bus? Yeah. And hotels and everything, you know. We have we have toys yeah, you know, for everything. Like oh, yeah. I thought you meant ones that you actually sit in. No, no, oh, no. like remote control was, cars. We got a big bus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. We're a mobile home. Tonight is an exciting night for us here at MTV, and for you guys, I'm hoping as well, because we have your video, Look at the Killer, going up against the yeah. top TV dinners. You seen TV dinners? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. great. I like that little alien. I know he's yeah, so fun. That guy yeah. eating potato chips. <laughs> well, you can use this opportunity to look in the camera and do a little campaigning and convince the American audience why they should call up and vote for Motley Crue tonight. You better call. Or well, we're going to come looking for you. <laughs> we'll find you. We will. Vote for us, because we're the bad boys of the rock. <laughs> come <laughs> on, call. Scared. Pick it up. No, pick it up. Pick it up. Right there, now. Okay, now dial that number. Okay, now you got it. Okay, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, it's actually till tonight they uh, <laughs> called now. They wouldn't really vote. Oh, well, keep it in mind. <laughs> well, we do wish you good luck, you know, in the fight in that video fights. Also, your tour with Ozzy. I heard you say before you don't ever really see Ozzy. I'd never seen him tour. I saw him in Black Sabbath. No, but when you're hanging on tour, do you ever come across him? Have you been seeing Ozzy? You know, his band hangs out with us a bit. Um, He's, yeah. he's really busy, you know, he's got right. interviews and stuff to the do. Baby. The baby. The right? baby, yeah, you know. Baby's not out on the road anymore. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was in his bus last night, as a matter of fact. 
crib, you know, right You're there. You're kidding. Stuff. Vince was in the crib. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for more toys. <laughs> All right, well, thank you very much. Thank you, Vince. Take care. Thank you thank very you. much, Nicky. Thanks for having Madden. us. Thank you. We'll be back with more video right after this. We can't do, you know, what can you do for Sunburn? Not too much. The kids out here are crazy today. It's, it's, it's so much fun. And Michigan is, uh, we'll, well, it's got to be the, our favorite place to play. Yeah. The favorite. Except Toronto, Canada, I yeah. hope. Oh, yeah, but then you have yeah, to yeah. Oh, no. be there real soon. You yeah. haven't played there yet, though, but we're waiting for you, for sure. Yeah. You know, all the kids are sitting out there baking and boozing in the sun. Uh, do you prefer outdoor concerts to indoor concerts, or how, does he, how do you feel about it? Uh, one thing about outdoor concerts, they get a lot crazier, it seems, than, than, indoor, um, than indoor concerts. Sunstroke. Yeah, I mean, drinking beer and sitting in the sun, man, gets you crazy. And, you know, girls get naked all the time. And Whereas indoor concerts, it's more of a mood type thing. Right. You know, the lights set the mood of, the, of, of if you're going to go crazy or not. So this is actually the, an outdoor festival that tests your skills as a band. You know, because you go out there with nothing, just your, just your, just the guys in your band, and that's it. No special effects. You got. I want to know something about your new album. I was uh, reading. You said that the third album is always a real test of strength for a band because they often fall on their asses. Uh, what about you, people? We've got some serious stuff stashed away. It's gonna kill everybody when it comes out. Can you can you give us any more details, or do we have to wait? Well, it's a. Uh, we've we've got a lot of. You know, we got a lot of good songs written. You know, for the for the album. It should be out. Uh, you're gonna have to wait for it. Oh, okay. Except for mm, me and my piano. Hey, it's Rose Dan. Good job. Oh, I'm gonna have a good show. Hey, dude, what's happening? When Motley Crue launched into their act, I was up on the mountain checking out the farthest possible point from the stage, just to see if a person would still be getting his money's worth. So, by the time Dave the cameraman and I waded back down, the band had finished their set. Sorry about that. But just to give you an idea of what to expect when they come on their Canadian tour in June. And us four is a tight unit, and then to do this is really a, just something that you have to fill in your heart. And I love it. I love these guys. I just want to keep going for it, but we owe it all to our fans. first party in the living room. I didn't know that it would lead to this. I'm completely speechless. <laughs> Thank you very much. We never believed it could actually ever happen. We, we were happy just to play, supporting other bands, and getting out there and having a good time with the kids. Now to be awarded something, it's uh, something you can't express. It feels fantastic. Well, I'm the happiest guy in the whole world. <laughs> My dad's probably the first happiest. That's Motley Crue, definitely for outrageous musicians. The first group to go gold in 1984, and you saw it here. Who called Too Young to Fall in Love, video directed by Mark Kahn, who did Kisses Lick It Up, as well as All Hell's Breaking Loose. Now, they shot that video in an old warehouse in New York and built it to look like back alleys of Shanghai in the 20s. Now, they were definitely up against some real karate experts, but the guys in Motley Crue learned how to do those martial arts movements by a guy who owns a company for you know actors supplying stunts here in New York City so and the guy told us that for street fighters Motley Crue really picked up the discipline very well and you saw it in that video now the girl you saw only 13 years old her parents were chaperones on the set and probably chaperones were needed with Motley Crue they're heading out on a major tour this summer and the video is the second one from the shout at the devil out better known as the drummer Razzle of a Finnish group called Hanoi Rocks died shortly after the accident. The driver, driver of the car, Vincent Neil Wharton, is the lead singer of the heavy metal band known as Motley Crue. Wharton has been charged with drunk driving and vehicular manslaughter, but is free on $25,000 bail. Two other people were hospitalized with injuries. Coming up, Neil Wharton spent several hours in jail this weekend on manslaughter charges. Neil was involved in a head-on traffic accident in Red Beach last night. The passenger in his car was killed. The victim was another rock musician, drummer Nichols Dingley of the punk group Hanoi Rocks. Neil with drunk driving and released on $2,500 bail. Motley Crue are shooting their own version of the Brownsville station tune, Smoking in the Boys Room. 
Nikki Six detailed the band's expanding philosophy. It's not just violent, it's not just sexist, it's not just historical, it's everything. And I think that's important. I think that we're educating the youth. It's mainly about this, uh, the main character, Jimmy, which is your average teenage, uh, not really rocker, he's a cross between Tom Cruise and Brian Adams. And he's just having a hard day, just like everybody else has had. And uh, he goes to school and gets a lot of heat at school. And he, he comes, he finds us in the bathroom and we pull him into our world. We've always had this sense of humor, and um, I guess no one got it but us. And um, that's like, with, with this video and with this whole album, that's what we're trying to get across, is the fact that, you know, we are a rock and roll band. We want to have a whole lot of fun, and we don't want to hurt anybody. And with this video, we want to bring across the fact that the fans and the band are one. Without big hair and makeup. Flexnet, yes. The motley uh, hat mold, as we call it. We've uh, always tended towards more of the glam than the heavy metal, than, than, because to us, heavy metal leaned more on the punk side. Make Motley Crue the success story of heavy metal. I'm on the way. I'm on the way. Oh, sweet Their Theater of Pain album went platinum on the strength of smoking in the boys' room and a 91-day tour. But lead singer Vince Neil will have to pay over $2 million damages for driving the car that killed Hanoi Rocks drummer Razzle and injured two others. For Motley Crue, he, he looks like the best golfer out here. Now, if only Tommy himself yeah, could keep yeah. golf on his mind. I'm just here to have a good time. I'm having a blast. Can't wait to get to the beer stand either. <laughs> <laughs> But it was up to that champion golfer, Tommy Lee himself, to spell out the real point of T.J. Martell's rock and golf and rock and bowl events. It's for a great cause, man. I mean, I couldn't imagine somebody in my family or, or your family or somebody like that that needs that, all that help, you know, and it's for everybody to do this, you know, I just see like a lot of progress happening, and it's a great, great thing. In July. Thank you, probably. I don't know. I just always like the New York attitude, you know. That those guys play some serious ball, I think. <laughs> See, she doesn't even love me. Spend Halloween with Motley Crue. I didn't know what Nikki was going to wear this year. I didn't know what Tommy was going to wear. And we, we showed up for a photo session, and everybody looked at each other and goes, Wow, it works. Something like that, it just happens. We click, we are a band. We're more of a band than like almost any band I know. You know, I don't say, well, why don't you do this and I'll do this. I mean, it just, it works that way. We are a real band for real entertainment. Everybody contributed a little bit more in the songwriting. Right. And everybody's grown as musicians and as songwriters, even, if they're, even though they're not even a, uh, a really a songwriter. But, so everybody's influences have come together and made what this is really even more of a Motley Crue sound than the last two albums. It's a band, and that's something, right. we've, that's something we've always wanted. When the band started um, in 1980 80 and 81, um, I wrote mostly all the music and now it's like gotten to the point where we we really all this is a bust you changed for the last album but now you're back to it yeah. right well i think the main problem with this whole heavy metal thing is everybody has a different definition of heavy metal do you have a definition of heavy metal well i'll tell you heavy metal is the way of life it's no hobby it's like looking at that audience and saying hey, hey bro, bud, let's, let's party, party. <laughs> <laughs> yes this is really happening <laughs> have a happy crew here nightmares of dreams Yes, Debbie is a happy woman today, but those creatures, what are they trying to tell us? People really win on MTV. Right, guys? Yeah! You could be next. Word yet on what the Motley Crew, Motley Groom, I should say, will wear, but Tommy's bandmate, guitarist Mick Mars, told MTV what he's wearing to the nuptials. I think what I'm going to be wearing is the... Uh, 
as a leather tuxedo. The guitars have been given to hard rock cafes around the world, but only one of them can call it home sweet home. Motley Crue's Mick Mars made that clear on Sunday. It stands out, you know, when you see the mask and stuff, you know that's off the theater of pain and you know whose guitar it is. Saying I do to Heather Locklear, we don't know how wedded bliss will affect Tommy's social life, but life with the crew goes on. The band have just begun rehearsals for their fourth album, and guitarist Mick Mars is optimistic. My prediction is, for 1986-87, this album will burn your fingers if you touch it. When the stylized music of the Baroque period gave way to the romanticism of the late 18th and early 19th centuries, the court musicians of the day probably had no inkling of what was to come along eventually. Motley Crue. present the award for the most experimental video. What's he doing? Yeah, Bruce, I, I thought we sh I thought I thought we shot that last night in our hotel room, man. You know, that girl, she could have won for best live act. No, she was pretty experimental. Remember when she ran over to the bed and she grabbed that thing and started sticking them over her? <laughs> Let's see how experimental these guys are, all right? <laughs> I'm Wendy O. Williams, and I'm here with Tommy Lee, and I'm here with Vince Neal, the two bad boys of rock and roll, or should I say the two darlings of rock and roll. <laughs> hey, guys, how you doing? Good, real good. Great. Uh, I like that tattoo. Uh, was that one of the girls who was at the party you were telling me yeah, about I last think night? That, yes, that was well, one of them. I know that girl. <laughs> That's a nice I know her. one. That's a nice one. <laughs> yeah. what, what, uh, what are we getting off with today? You know, it's starting yeah. off? Yeah. Well, I guess we're going to start off with uh, our first video that we ever did called Live Wire. Right. We did this one uh, years ago. And uh, you see there's a lot of changes from Motley back then to Motley right now. But uh, we're still proud of it. That's it. Okay. Okay. All right, you guys. <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> Who were your early influences? <coughs> How did you guys get together and, uh, come on, who have you been ripping ideas off all this time yeah, from? Yeah, ripping up things from everybody. I right, think. tell <laughs> me about it. Well, you know, we grew up listening to you know, Aerosmith and uh, Deep Purple and Zeppelin and, you know, like that. We all, me and Tommy went to high school together. We were in rival bands. Yeah. Playing backyard parties and things like that. <laughs> and uh, when we got together, Tommy and Nikki, um, we're looking for um, people to, to start a band with, and they, fit, we fat, they found Mick in a, a ad in a newspaper. It said, loud, rude, aggressive guitar player. There you go. So they called him <laughs> up, and he looked like Morticia from the Adams Family, so. Yeah. Your guy. <laughs> <laughs> Opened the door and said, this is the guy. We didn't have to hear him play. And then he played, and he's incredible as well, but just the way he looked, he was a the guy yeah. we are looking for. Yeah, and then they, uh, they were looking for a singer, and then I was singing at a club in Hollywood, and, uh, and that was it. He, he was belting out like cheap trick, cheap trick cover, songs. cover tunes. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. We'll, <laughs> we'll be back with more proof. <laughs> and we got smoking in the boys. Right? Tell us about this next clip we're gonna see. Um, the next clip is smoking in the boys' room. And uh, if you ever seen the movie The Hills Have Eyes, a cannibal guy, and and. Uh, this guy's name is Michael Behrman. He played. He's the guy that played the principal in uh, in our in the video, and he's also in One Foot of the Cuckoo's Nest. Real weird dude, but uh, yeah, strange cool. looking cat, <laughs> man. All right. So let's have it. Let's go. All right. This is smoking in the boys' room. Check it out. Okay, we know legally you can't talk about the accident mm -hmm. with Razzle from Hanoi Rocks. Right. But uh, tell me, you know, like your true feelings on it, and tell me something about this new album. Yeah, well, um, we wanted to put a message on for all the kids um, because there is a danger in drinking and driving, 
and we don't want to lose any of our fans. Even though we're the bad boys of rock, doesn't mean that we don't care about people. And a lot of bands, you know, I mean, all bands care about their fans. And, um, you know, we do like to have a good time, just like everybody else. But what we're just trying to say is that when you do drink, or you do do drugs, or you do do anything like that, you know, take a limo, take a cab, or sleep there, or have a friend drive you, you know, because a lot of people think that um, it, it won't, you know, won't happen to them, but, you know, it, it can happen to anybody. It's, 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 it's real good advice. I mean, one thing of working with uh, Gene Simmons in the studio, mm -hmm. Gene doesn't drink, he doesn't uh, do drugs, and he's, um, a lot of people, um, too, I mean, if you choose to do it or if you choose not to do it, I mean, as long as your personal life is exciting enough, that's where it's at, because it's, you know, it's, it's just no fun when you can't stand up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Walking on your lips is no right, fun. Right. <clears throat> All right, don't go away. We're going to be back with more crew. Ooh. Hey, I'm Ron Keel. You want to rock with me? You want to be in my next video? I'd love it. You have the... Tell me, you know, like you guys, you use these uh, upside down uh, pentagram and a lot of your stuff. Uh, I, in what, 1978, 1979, um, I found it confused a lot of people. Mm -hmm. uh, what does it mean to you? You know, when we uh, put it on the on the Too Fast for Love album, our first record, actually all we wanted to, we just wanted a symbol that when you saw the symbol, you thought of Motley Crue. And we, so we looked at a lot of, you know, different things, you know, experimental, all kinds of different things. But that was just like the most, uh, the strongest symbol that we could find. We finish up. Well, we started in Japan, and we. we um, this was your first time in Japan. Yeah, we, did, right? we didn't go there last year. Yeah. And uh, so the, uh, the Canadian North American part of we wind up winded up in Honolulu around Christmas time. So we try to follow the the, the pro golf circuit. You know, yeah. wherever there's the sun, we're going to play. Good for you. <laughs> and um, no we, snow on we this. Played, Keep it hot. Yeah. We play down in Brazil in uh, January, and then February, March, April in Europe, and that just about winded up. All right. So we got a long time yeah. to go. All right. <laughs> All right. Stay tuned. We're going to be back with more sex, rock and roll, and the crew. <laughs> Heavy Metal Wednesday. Yeah. want to rate the countries. And uh, which country do you like touring the best in? That's an easy one. Yeah. <laughs> Sweden. 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 <laughs> Sweden. Why? Do you like Sweden <laughs> the best? Uh, we, I tell you what, when we first got to uh, Stockholm last year, we were walking down the street, and I think they ship ugly girls to, to Norway or someplace like that. If you're ugly, they say you get you out of the country. You walk down the street, and there's nothing but beautiful blondes. Barefooted. And, you oh, know, it's, and, like, and, the, oh, and it's all man. beaches and topless beaches and nude beaches, and it's just like you know, home. <laughs> it's great when people are relaxed about sex. I mean, it's really great. It makes a big difference. Oh, especially the Swedes. It makes a big difference when people are relaxed. On the beaches, of course, everyone's running around half naked, so that's like, that's a nice sight as well. It's the way it should be. Of course. The way it should I love be. it. The people only way. Make such the a only way. Big deal about it. We'd all have a lot more fun. Oh, I wish they'd let them do that in California. Yeah. I'd move down by Vince's place. <laughs> What's the name of this next video coming up? Too young to fall in love. All right. It's uh, in the video we're saving this poor young girl from prostitution, and we become the superheroes. <laughs> so it's kind of it's, twisted around. It's but. kind of shut. It's, it's this takes place in like Soho or or, or old like the, it's like an old Chinatown setting. It's, it's kind of neat. All right. We get, we get to do a little. We get to do a little. <laughs> fight. Motley Crew to the rescue. That's we it. Get to do a little Superheroes right we out. TV land. Video and stuff. It was fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, man. Cutting punch out a few people. It was great. All right, that's all for Heavy Metal Wednesday with the crew here. You be sure to watch uh, next week. All right. Thanks a lot for having thanks us. Thanks for having us. All, here, right. Man. Yeah. All right. Let's go talk about sex some more. Now. Yeah. <laughs> Their albums for Electric Asylum sell millions, and they're one of the top ten grossing concert bands this year. 
Their albums include songs like Live Wire, quote, I'll either break her face or take down her legs, get my ways at will, go for the throat, never let loose, going in for the kill. They say, oh, they're bad, they're evil. But we're not bad, we're not evil, we're just creating great music and we're having a really good time. But obviously, it's just like with Elvis Presley. I mean, look, they went and photographed him from the crotch down, right? I had a party in my backyard. This is who I'd invite. <laughs> okay, I'll go try another one then. I will try another one. Heavy metal people do have feelings, and a lot of us have kids. And you could imagine if your if your kids were starving, you'd want to help too. I mean. We're not these evil people just out for sex and drugs and money. We don't sit back in limousines and count our money each night. It's, uh, you know, this is a job, too. And this is one way where our fame can help people. On their last American tour, Motley Crue were closing their show with a version of Jailhouse Rock. Well, Crue vocalist Vince Neil is about to gain some very personal insight into the song because next Monday he's going behind bars. The 14th, I have to go in. I was, I was supposed to go in a couple weeks ago, but I guess all the jails were full. Damn. <laughs> but I have to go in on the 14th. Oh. Next time I get out, um, Tommy's foot should be better, and we should just steamroll right along with the, with the new record and get it out and get back out on tour. Uh -huh. What's the title of the record going to be? Girls, girls, girls. We did some videos before, I mean, before when we were just like, you know, playing gutters, and they're, they're the worst videos you've ever seen in your life, and we're going to put one of them on there. And you can, you'll never see it again unless you buy this tape, but it, it's pretty funny stuff. Well, the early crew video is for Toast of the Town. Interviews and uncensored behind-the-scenes footage of the crew being their motley selves. And there are two never-before-seen videos from their early pre-makeup days, Take Me to the Top and Public Enemy Number 1. Tape also contains all of crew's video clips from Looks to Kill through Home Sweet Home, so do check it out. But to could we possibly add? Three hit albums, plenty of headlines, and endless stories about life in the raunchiest of rock and roll bands have made the words Motley Crue synonymous with, well, Motley Crue. Bassist Nicky Six founded the band, and he still calls most of the shots, but he let us know that there's room for everybody to join in the fun. When the band started in 1980 80 and 81, um, I wrote mostly all the music, and now it's like gotten to the point where w we, we really all contribute because we're all four together all the time. It, it comes across in the music. 
Over the last couple of years, the crew haven't just been making records. They've been making headlines. In late 1984, vocalist Vince Neil was at the wheel of a car that crashed, killing Hanoi Rock's drummer Razzle. Vince was convicted of manslaughter and driving while intoxicated. This past summer, he spent 30 days behind bars. This spring, drummer Tommy Lee made happier headlines when he married actress Heather Locklear. Nikki Six figures any band that makes the news probably makes the charts, too. We are a rock and roll band. You know, it's not classical music. It's not pop music. It's not bubblegum music. We are a rock and roll band. And we do get in trouble, you know, now and then. Everyone's gotten in trouble. But the, the bottom line is, is we want to have a whole lot of fun. With Home Sweet Home and stuff like that, I think, uh, you know, we just we just did that to just say we've done that. Now we're going to go back and just beat, beat on the, the serious rock for a while. Yeah, there's a lot of, like, there's a lot of different types of music on the Theater Pain album. I mean, there's, like, blues, there's the slow songs, and there's kind of stuff. We're just kind of getting back into the more guitar-oriented stuff. Like the first album, Raw. Yeah, much raw. More street. Right now, the crew are in Los Angeles working on their fourth album. We'll get to hear it early next year. But until then, we can tell you the title. All you have to do is think of three words very close to Crew's heart. Girls, girls, girls. We, you know, we got girls, girls, girls from, you know, from strip clubs, because we hit most of the strip clubs around the country. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, I went ahead and put the tattoo on my arm, so now, because I really like the name, so I figured if I put the tattoo on, there's no way they could... So now we're kind of stuck with it. Our main objective is to get bigger and badder and ruder and sleazier than anybody else that even stepped on a stage or even thought of being on a stage. Some of the names of the song on the album are Five Years Dead, um, Girls, 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 All in the Name of Rock and Roll, and uh, Dancing on Glass. Those are just some of the, the titles that we have as far as uh, the songs, but we don't have a single picked out yet. You know, we do that at the last last second. So far, we've been we've been doing a lot of uh, experimental stuff as far as recording with computers and emulators and sequencers and all kinds of different different types of approaches for Motley Crue, but uh, staying in our in in our roots of, of hard rock and blues. So it's nice. It's the tones sound better. It sounds better overall as an album, but it's it's a lot more raunchy than what we did on our last album, Theater of Pain. It's more back to our first Six album. And Tommy Lee from Motley Crue are here. They've been munching on our fine cuisine over there at the uh, kitchen area. Uh, well, and I'm full, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask you first off, since we've been. No, I'm sorry, Jenny. Uh, <laughs> Heather, no. Um, let me ask you. We've been talking about Night Rangers Golf charity thing that's happening out in Sonoma Valley and you're going to be there? Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't have envisioned you like playing golf ever. <laughs> I, just, uh, I just go because uh, I like to drink and drive the car around in a little electric car, <laughs> tear up the green. I don't play. I can't. So uh, in other words, it'll be just a bunch of rockers just, out there making a lot of divots doing in the, the silly, fairway. The silly stuff. What, what's your favorite part, driving or putting? Driving. <laughs> Good <Most> question. <laughs> <laughs> but it's for charity, so it's a good cause. Yes, yeah. Okay, there you have it. And you're not going to have anything to do no, with it. No, no. <laughs> I'll be drinking on the side. <laughs> cheering along. Why don't you caddy? That, that's good. That's, that's not bad. Yeah. I guess someone to carry the clubs, and I'll just kind <laughs> of. <laughs> You'll have a right. caddy to be. Uh, I can deal with that. Oh, we just wanted to take a short moment to say hello, get yourself settled in, and we'll talk to you in just a bit, all right? Cool. Okay. Cool. Good event. We'll be back. See ya. Michael Six, who uh, just got into the studio here to chit chat with us about. Uh, you said you came from mixing the new album. Ma mastering. Mastering. Okay, mastering the new album. Yeah, yeah. little difference. All right, what is the difference between mastering and mi no, mixing and mastering? Yeah. We're actually cutting the little grooves that oh, uh, grooves play music. The vinyl. So yeah. press it to vinyl. <laughs> yeah. Now, the, uh, the album is called Girls, Girls, Girls. Mm -hmm. That hasn't changed. No, no. Not yet. You guys seem pretty enthusiastic about how it sounds so it's far. It's good. Happening. We, now, we spent uh, almost almost four and a half months recording it, which is a long time for us, and it sounds great. And we really just tweaked each little instrument out and got everything sounding good. Sound and sound. It's big. Sound it sounds great. big. And we got we used um, gospel singers for background singers, which sounds really weird. Is this a gospel uh, group? <coughs> no, there's, there's three of them. You know, but they're, they're actual gospel singers and in, in a church, and it sounds phenomenal because it's real rich sounding. The background vocals mixed with ours, and there's some, like stuff. There's a song like Bad Boy. 
Cowboy Boogie and with the kind of gospel thing going against the blues riffs. It's pretty it's, wild. It's great. I mean, it's catchy and it's and it's interesting and it gives it its its own sound. Well, you guys have had that like certain uh, anthemic sound to your music before, so when I a little gospel mixed in, yeah, I yeah, say yeah. the two didn't seem to match. But <laughs> well, yeah. We're always trying to do something different. Well, well, just run down a few of the songs that you're really pleased about, in particular the one that is going to be the first one that we'll hear. Uh, that'll be Girls, the Girls. title track. Wild Side's a great song. Um, Dancing on Glass. All together now. And, uh, yeah, we get good at Man. <laughs> Um, I hope you're right. So we got we got live way. Jailhouse Rock. Yeah, jail oh, yeah? from uh, Long Beach Arena in Los Angeles last year. Oh, that'll be great. last year. Yeah, well, that'll be a little treat it's for everybody. Yeah, yeah, it's neat. It's really good. It's the last song. It was hard to pick. Too. I mean, we recorded it every night, and it was we had to go through all the tapes, and finally we just said hometown. We got it. Yeah, do. there you go. It was nice. But talk about the video then for girls. Are you thinking about it already? Yeah, we've got some really uh, yeah, some ideas interesting that, ideas. And we're hoping it'll get played on MTV. Yeah. <laughs> well, this, you're going to give our censors a hard time, is that right? Uh, yeah, why not? So might as well be it. on yeah. the edge. So it's kind of a secret at this point. Be some yeah. women in there? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, we're we're looking <coughs> like two or three different gonna, companies. In in the song, Vince mentions mentions um uh in Fort Lauderdale, the dollhouse. There's all these strip clubs. That's what the songs the, yeah. the tunes about. Uh the body shop in LA, the uh, Seven Vale. So hopefully Crazy Horse in in France, Paris, France. Yeah, so hopefully we're gonna go to these locations and film you know, so it's really has possible. something to do with the tune. You know, you see a video that has absolutely nothing to do with the song, you go we keep everything pretty much, yeah. Um, yeah. Lot, you know, out outside and stuff with our the whole look of the band and everything, like on the street or not not a high tech. All year. depends on the budget, I suppose. Then that gets right down to it. Do you go to Paris? Do you uh, that strip club? No, in no, France, no. Guys, I think we're going to have to do that in the studio. Yeah. <laughs> we'll fake. We'll hire models. Yeah. Uh, this is no repeat Monday, and we haven't repeated a video all day. But we're going to no play repeat. a video that seemed to have so much repetition on the channel here in terms of dial MTV. It's at the yeah. top of the chart since we began that whole thing. One of my favorites. It's one of my favorites. Right. One of the American viewing and listening public's favorites. It's home, sweet home, and we'll talk to him more. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> um, I assume that you have a tour all planned out now. That is a stage show, anyway. Yeah. Are you thinking about the concept for the stage show? Yeah, it's. Uh, we just looked at the final model the other day. Yeah. And uh, it's wild. Ba basically, to put it in a nutshell, we're taking a, a huge strip show on the road. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. This will. This will. Red. It's, ah. it's uh, red. And uh, <laughs> it's wild. I, it's, it's real hard to explain, but it's sleazy, I guess. If yeah. Has that bordello feel to it? Uh, <laughs> yeah. The red light district. Now yeah. this is sort of mirror the girls' video, I assume, which you say will have a lot of girls in it. Yeah. And. Uh, well, we got girls on stage this year, the yeah. background singers I was talking about. The gospel people, you mean? Well, they what won't be got? gospel to go on the road with us. But. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be singing the gospel afterwards. Yeah, they sure will. <laughs> Do we have to travel with the band again? <laughs> again? I'm scared to go to sleep. So, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> so okay. it'll be an extravaganza then on stage. Yeah. yeah. We got some, I mean, yeah. We, you, you can only say, say so much. It'd be kind of a bummer to yeah, tell to be people. A surprise. No, but, we don't um, but we are starting on... June the 19th in 19th Tucson. In Tucson for show. And then we're off. Can't wait. It's been, you know, it's been over a year since we've been on stage. It's yeah, been, been a while. You're gonna go on. You're gonna go on the road for how long now? Uh, probably close to nine months. Wow. Nine, ten months. Nine, ten. Got a lot of, you know, got a lot of places to At go. At this point in time, you look forward to touring. I mean, is that like the next step? Oh, the yeah, release yeah. of the record, obviously, is the next. Well, step. Yeah. We thought we were on tour. We got on the plane to come here. Yeah. We're like, yeah. <laughs> Not going home. I know. <laughs> yep. Making the rounds. Mm -hmm. Chit chatting with people like us. Yeah. Well, have a good time. Thanks. If dude. you're hungry, please go and eat a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. The no. donuts are not <laughs> quite stale. Okay, Tommy Lee and Nikki Six. The new video is going to be Girls, which is coming out, I guess, a uh, couple yeah, of weeks. Film three it weeks. On the 25th. So. Oh, okay. So, so yeah, you got a little bit of a wait. Yeah, a little wait. Yeah, a little so, bit. So we're hold trying. Your be we're trying. Okay, it's okay. We don't want to. We want it to be good quality. Yeah. So don't good. rush. Can't rush. And go to Paris to the Crazy Horse yeah. and all those other neat Do you want to come along? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I should mention when's the cameo? album coming out. Little the album's coming out. Cameo? Thank you. Yeah. I, I tried to ignore I that you were saying that. I saw you on Mike's hammer, by the way. Uh -huh. <laughs> you read that cue card, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ask Al about Mike Hammer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be in a movie with Robbie Benson, too, in the future. Cool. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. That's giant. Yeah. 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 Well, anyway, uh, when is the album coming out? Girls, Girls, Girls? May, between May 5 and May 10. Yeah. Okay. Sometime and, uh, in there. It's great. Do you... Anything else you want to know? No. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Dial -M TV is coming up very soon. Uh, guys, you know, if Girls was out right now, it would be at the top of the charts. But 
in a month, it'll be at the top of the dial on TV chart once again. I hope so. Yeah. So stick around and then cross your fingers. Addicted to Style Report, which I think we could talk about style with these guys right now, but we're going to do it in just a few minutes. It's brought to you by La Tigre. Let's, let's see this shirt here, why don't we? <laughs> <laughs> front of you that looks good enough you're gonna take it Bro, that's the reason most people get into rock bands it's for the group sweetie you'll do it anywhere you know take them in his bathroom you know they, they just they just want to be they just want to you know they want to their brains out they just you know that's what they're there for you know and we get up we get up off stage and you're ready to rock so we oblige him this is the roach we had we gave him double smiley passes with just two grins on it and then if a girl was, was wearing one of those, one of those, we knew that that's what, that she got it from a road crew guy. So stay away from that one. <laughs> I guess the most popular way to get backstage is to just jump right up on the stage and then let the security guys um, pull you off. Because then if you're good looking, they usually just keep you back there. It was just to sit there for hours in a room waiting for you. And, you know, and then you pick one out, and boom, you're gone. Wow. Girl bands. Yeah, they're pretty sexually active. I don't think as much, I don't think there's girl bands are as sexually active as guys, though, but they're, you know, they rock just like we do, too. I mean, they got groupies, too. Just, just everything's in reverse. I, I guess the football did. player guy's there, too. It was like big ro rotating. This is a little girl I wouldn't want my girl at any rock concert. Not at all. I wouldn't even, as a matter of fact, I wouldn't even let her know I was in a band. I'd go to a rehearsal with a suitcase in my hand, or a briefcase in my hand and a, and a tie on. That's not a place for it. It'll happen. Sometimes you'll, you'll find a real cool one, and you might fly her to a city or something like that. And um, that does not happen too often, though, because usually it's just like people cool, um, in this business, because I've seen it done. Um, but it's, it, you know, it's real hard because there's always that little guy on your shoulder going, just like in Animal House, get her, get her. And, you know, you usually want to. Bring. I think the days of, like, the professional groupies. Over. Get on a Harley's, like, on, you know, when everyone's in town and go terrorize, um, like, places in Malibu and stuff. <laughs> the Dark Angel. Yeah, the Dark Angel. Yeah, other celebs involved in this, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know if I should mention any up. names or not. Uh, read the National Enquirer. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> You'll get it. So, you, your fans have always stood by. You guys have been, well, you had your long time between albums, but the, uh -huh. but the fans have always been there. But we wanted to know on the inside sleeve of the album, it says, this album is dedicated to the scumbags and posers who didn't stand by the crew when the chips were down. Who are you referring to? To all the people that, that didn't believe us, in us, that the ones that left us, you know, that they go, oh, Motley Crue, you know, Vince did this, and Nikki did this, right. and Tommy did this, and, and they didn't believe in the band. They weren't true crew fans. So this is kind of like saying, told you so. Right. <laughs> you know? Well, good for you. You're telling them so. You're doing great yeah. on tour. Have a good time, and thanks a lot for stopping by. Okay, thank you. Speaking of Malibu, where you guys cruise around on your motorcycles, this clip was shot in Malibu. It's a hip clip of the week. It's called The Insiders. It's Ghost on the Beach. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Okay. Damaged her hearing. Victoria Homan says she suffered a severe hearing dysfunction and mental anguish as a result of going to a Motley Crue concert. The St. Petersburg, Florida woman is seeking $5,000 in damages from the band. She claims her injuries happened when she took her daughter to a December 1985 concert and they sat 10 feet from the stage. Now you might... Motley Crue and Whitesnake? This is going to be... going to lock up everything that moves. Wriggles, slivers... The sleaziest thing you've ever seen in your life. <sighs> Just can't remember. That's so late. Watch it, watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Oh. <laughs> all right. Well, we're finally here, dude. We made it. We made it. You know, call it all you girls, girls, girls out there. We're here to fulfill your wildest dreams. <laughs> Me and Vinny rounded up some of the raunchiest crap that MTV will possibly play. Yeah, you know, we got all of our buds out here today. We got from White Snake, Us, The Stones, Rat, you know, Big M. Hey, Nick, how you doing out there, bud? Yeah, I got them out guys. there. And, uh, you know, ACDC. Yeah, and we got uh, one of the very first Motley Crue videos filmed called Live Wire, so stick around. All right. 
Okay, we're back. I'm Vince Neal. I'm Tommy Lee. And we're here. And we're winging it, man. I'm <laughs> winging it here. But we did ride our ratback fat tails here. How do you like these things? Yeah, huh? look, you gotta love the windshield. Keeps the bugs out of the teeth. You Keeps know. the hair up and everything yeah, like that. Yeah, you can't you know, mess up great. the hair. It's great. <laughs> oh, anyway, we have some uh, some riding tips. Uh, when you're approaching a red light, this is the uh, the throttle. You punch it. Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, oh. no, no. Of course not. Oh, I. You have to no. hit the brake. Tommy. Oh, the brake. Oh, oh it's See, on I'm this always side. giving Tommy riding tips. Nah, I fall asleep. Now, but we'll discuss this later on in the show. <laughs> um, dude, you got a light, dude? Yeah, I do. Oh, yes. Of fact. Whoa, hello. <laughs> <laughs> You got a cigarette? Oh, 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 come back here, come back here. Oh, this, this is our little lighter here. This is our lighter, Cherise. <laughs> Say hello, Cherise. Hello, Cherise. Thank you. <laughs> and you'll be seeing a lot more of her later on. Yes. And we'll be back right after this. You don't want to miss her. I'd stay tuned. Okay, we're back again. And for another important road tip, <laughs> Molly Cruz, road tip number, number two. two. Tommy's going to demonstrate exactly how he gets off of a motorcycle. Okay. This is important, so listen up. Now, when I pull into a club, uh, I, I don't believe in parking when there's never a bike rack in town. So uh, I just pull up and drop it and throw it on its no, side. No, 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 no. No? This is really important, okay? When you're on your bike and you get off of it, use the kickstand. Oh, <laughs> really? Those are those that's what that's for. for. Oh, well. Okay, well. Well, now you know, and now you know, too. And, you know, um, we're going to go right to some white snake right now, and uh, we're going to be taking these guys on the road with us. Yeah. And uh, uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. June, wait, uh, June 16th. Something like that. Tucson's first and, date, I think. And, you know, I like about this video, it's got the uh, Tiny Katane girl in there, the one that Tom Hanks is in Bachelor Party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so check it out right now. Do you see Ow. Florida, huh? How about those girls in that video? You shook me. Yeah, man, they're shaking. I like to check on the old uh, bucking bronco, man. Like you gotta one, love it. I like the one leaning over the... Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know about that one, huh? <laughs> hey, uh, dude, that's a, that's a great shirt you got there. Huh? Well, I noticed yours, dude. Uh, it, that's nice, too. Where'd you get yours? Well, uh... I guess after visiting the old police department quite frequently, I got a free shirt out of the deal. <laughs> <laughs> me, too. I know. <laughs> we'll be right back. Yeah! Well, that was a good commercial. I loved it. <laughs> you know, we're back here with uh, safety tip number three, the Molly Cruz safety tips on bikes. Tommy Lee, take it over, dude. <laughs> okay, well, when I'm driving <clears throat> through town and I'm feeling a little tired, I just lean back, kick back, steer with my feet, and do my thing. Catch a couple of Zs? What the hell? <laughs> Important safety tip not to do, kid. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, uh, let's go into a video. What do you think? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, man. Okay, um, well, these are some old friends of ours. Yeah, you know, Keith. And, uh, Keith yeah. Uh, I think Keith owes uh, Tommy a little money. Yeah, I'll and, find uh, you, Keith. Mick, I know where you, know, you live. Mick, say hi to the old lady for me, and uh, <laughs> let's, uh, let's start him up. Would start me up. Ow! Right here. How about those girls, huh? Gotta love it. Gotta, gotta love it. it. You've gotta love that. All that. <laughs> and, you know, our album is called Girls, 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 if you don't know by now, but you should. And uh, I love girls, so does Tommy, huh? Yeah, man. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. That brings us up to Motley Crue's important road tip number four. You know, when, you, <laughs> when you're riding around on your Harley, it is very crucial. Crucial. Always crucial. Remember that word, crucial, to have a beautiful girl sitting behind you. Because if not, it ain't gonna work. No, it ain't cool. That's, it ain't cool. Yeah. Uh oh. Wait a minute. There's no back seat here. <laughs> okay, that brings us to number four. You snooze, you lose, dudes. Always have a back seat on the back of your bike, or that's it. Yeah. <laughs> or your solo. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess we'll be right back. See ya. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that one's over with. Yeah. But you know, we're coming right up to, uh, I don't think you've ever heard of these guys, but Al and the Scumbags. That's us. That's us. The horn section in Night Ranger's new video, and we have it right now, just for you. Mm 
Good evening, Miss Galore. The five men you are looking at are a band called Rat. Your assignment. All right, back again, little rat, little slip of the lip, little LA guys, a little rock and roll for you right here. Little dodging the old photographers. We've uh, yeah. done that a few times. That ticks me off, man. Yeah, too many times, man. I hate that. Give I don't us like our that weapons. I'm not digging it. Let Let's go. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you know what we like to do to photographers that do that to us? time here. I hope you enjoyed all of our, you guys our road tips. You know, keep yeah. it safe though, you know, yeah. don't be like him. <laughs> and uh, catch us on the road, look for the new album, Girls, Girls, Girls. And uh, before, before we go and play the next video clip, yeah. we have a presentation to make to MTV. This is uh, our certified platinum video and we'd like to thank MTV and all you people out there for buying it. The Motley Crue Uncensored video. And um, Catch us on the road, man, because we're looking forward to it, and we're going to see you out there. And here's a little reminder, a little home sweet home. Cruise to beautiful Bermuda, but watch the dream turn into a nightmare as a sunny, carefree voyage becomes a motley cruise to nowhere. Here's a chance for you and the guests to join the bad boys of rock and roll and their celebrity pals for a journey straight into the heart of the most dreaded stretch of water in the world, the Bermuda Triangle. Dead men tell no tales, matey. If you survive, you'll wind up on the pink sand beaches of Bermuda with a thousand dollars in your pocket. Plus canoe, the man's cologne by Dana supplies the jet skis. Ah, shiver me timbers. To enter, just send a postcard with your name and address to MTV Cruise, P.O. Box 1211, Radio City Station, New York, New York, 10101. This is your chance to cruise with the crew. Whoever finds this, please make sure our story gets told. Well, where should I begin? At the beginning, yeah. The day started out perfect. Yeah, just like a Harley Davidson with a tank full of gas. The crew was off to cruise the Caribbean. And of course, by our side, a boatload full of babes. And even better, some other dudes that pick up the whole tab. <laughs> we were set to take a ride on the wild side, as only the crew could do. This cruise was a real cool idea. A little fishing, a little fun in the sun. Actually, this whole daylight thing was a concept the band didn't normally deal with, to be honest. So we were kind of psyched. Little did we know that some supernatural force would take us from being psyched to being freaked. strange fog enveloped the boat like a death shroud. We hoped the weirdness would stop. Otherwise, a lot more women were going to end up overboard. 
We tried to forget the fog and get into the daily activities at hand. That daily massage therapy the doctor ordered was really working out when all of a sudden... That damn fog again, but this time, no Nicky. Dude! The guys in the road crew must have brought a fog machine or something. Is this a gag or what? In the band's early days, we had some gigs where we wanted to disappear real quick. But this, boys, this was getting serious. Nicky was missing, and we were going to find him no matter what obstacles were put in our way. My lens is getting all fogged up. If my math was right, that left just two more crew dudes alive and okay. Great, just great. Half my band has been totaled. Next time I take a crew somewhere, no boat. The weather was gorgeous and so was the scenery. Everything seemed so cool. But something supernatural was on our tail and was beginning to be a drag. Guys, do something. It's getting really foggy now. You're never going to run. Man, I can't stand one. <laughs> a fog from hell had us trapped. It snagged Nicky, then as the rest of us scoured the seas for him, the fog nailed Mick. Now it's up to Tommy and I to plan our own attack. Four. Suddenly, I heard Tommy scream. Catch you later, dude! Thanks to that damn fog, Vince Neal had now become a solo act. I was too mad to be scared. I wanted to know what happened to the guys. Were they dead, alive? Were they being tortured? And most important of all, had they come across any great strip joints yet? Nicky, Mick, Tommy, gone. History, a memory. Three greater guys never walked the earth. Mick, what a thoughtful guy, a pal, a real friend, a leather-dressed man among men, a mega dude to the max. Then there was Nicky, a prince, a true buddy, even though he did have a habit of stealing a girlfriend away. Hey, look, nobody's perfect. And last but not least, there was Tommy, a wild man of epic proportions. Tommy Lee wasn't a man, he was a god. Thoughts of the band consumed me, so much that I didn't notice that creeping terror until it was too late. I felt something slimy and cold wrap itself around me. First I thought it was some record company weasel, but then I knew it was the fog. What else would you think? I don't know. It just sort of ends. <laughs> I knew they'd fall for that stupid note in the bottle trick. Hey up, dude. All right, Vince. All right, you win. You win, man. Come on. Hey, how, how are we? How are the MTV viewers are gonna know what happened to the Motley Crue? To know her, though. You really think they're gonna let us show that stuff on TV? What are you nuts? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right.